Right, another very much the Beautiful Calculus question from this exam number four this time. Using Green's theorem to evaluate this line integral over a closed curve, in this case a circle, comprising of these two components of some vector field. So, Green's theorem then. Right, so what's that then? Well, that says if you take some closed curve lying on the plane, and there's some field, some vector field, depending on x, y, acting all over that plane, then the summation of the scalar product of that field in the direction of movement to the point along it, so there's the scalar product of them, the two components, is equal to the summation over the region inside it and including the curve of the partial of the y component with respect to x minus the partial of the x component with respect to y. Now, you've seen that before. Now let's look at the determinant. In particular, if you were to write out the curl of f, then it would form this part here. It would form this part here, which is the minor of k. Which means that means you've got the curl of f dot k. It's like saying if you, so you travel around that curve, you're actually gathering up the curl of f in the direction above the area. Still, doesn't matter. You're actually just using the pattern here. So, going back to the actual question itself. Here were the two components that you had, that were room. So there's the two components, the x and y components of the vector field. Right, and the path that you were travelling around was a circle, luckily. That's nice and easy. Circle radius 1, centre of the origin. Could be easier than that. Right, and then by Green's theorem, you would say, right, we would take this particular scale product, we would take the y component and differentiate it with respect to x, and there's nothing for the second part of it, and then take the x component and differentiate with respect to y, and again, luckily, there's nothing from the second part, and then, again, luckily, these two parts here just come down to 6. Lots of x to the 8y squared. Next, x's and y's, circles, polar coordinates would be better. x's are cos theta, theta being the angle up from the x-axis, y is r sine theta, and the area element is r dr d theta. Right, take the 6 out now. The summation, r is just going to go from 0 to 1, and theta is going to go all the way around from 0 to 2 pi. So x is r cos theta, so that's power 8. y is r sine theta, so that's power 2. Area element, r dr d theta. Right, iteration to the side here. So as far as theta is concerned, I've got cos theta to the power 8. Better put that in the side thing. Q. And as far as R is concerned, it's just going from 0 to 1, and I've got 11 of those, R to the power 11. Right, there's a beta function here, just double check this, all the way up to 2 pi. Sine squared is positive throughout, and so will cost the power 8b, so I'll just be the same as 4 watts. All those four parts would be equal, so 4 times each of these. And then that makes 10, so take them down in 2s as well. They're both even, so times pi up in 2. 11, that goes up to 12, so 1 12th of it, 1 12th of 1. Now let's just knock all these numbers down. 5 can knock that down to 2, the 3 can get a 4 there. So I'm left with 7 pi on top, and well, lots of 2s, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 2 to the power 8, that's 2, 5, 6 underneath. There, that's that one done. Right, part 2. Now this time it's a surface integral of some surface lying in three dimensional space. So the trick this time is going to be to flatten that down onto the xy plane by using an appropriate scale factor. Right, so we've got to find the part of the plane contained within this infinite cylinder. So we've got this infinite cylinder with the equation x squared plus y squared equals 1. No mention of z because it's free to roam up and down. So in fact z is going to be the z-axis will be the vertical axis of that cylinder. And then there's a plane cutting through it. So there's this plane with the equation 3x squared, so 3x plus 2y minus n equals 56. And when it cuts through, it won't form a circle because it's at an angle, it's going to form an ellipse. And it's that elliptical surface, which you can call S1, that you have to carry out this integration over. So you have to find the integration over that ellipse for x squared plus y squared ds. Now, since that's lying in space, you can make it easier by flattening that down onto the plane when it would just become a circle. So flattening onto the xy plane, that shape then flattens down to a circle. So it's going to be the integral over this circle here, a circle with the equation x squared plus y squared equals 1, 
the value in that integral over it. Now, you'll have to change the, volume, the area element though. Now, if you can express that in the form of Zx of y, then the ratio for the area element is 1 plus the partial of z by x squared plus the partial of z by y squared times the area element on the plane dx dy. Now, so what that would be z would be 3x plus 2y minus 56. So the partial of z by x would be 3 and the partial of z by y would be 2. Putting it into that, that gives me the area element would have this scale factor 1 plus 3, 3 squared plus 2 squared times divided by dx. So what's that? That's going to be 1, 4, 9, 14, so it's root 14 dx dy over this area here. Now, that's a circular area. So, and if you've got a circular area, then obviously the best thing to do, I'll just draw that back in again neatly. So with this nice little circular area here, this would plus minus goes 1, so you would use polar coordinates then to work that out. Right. Polar coordinates. So x is r cos theta, y is r sine theta, but also r squared is x squared plus y squared, very handy here, and d is r dr d theta. Right, so I've got the integral, take the root 14 out of, and that'll just be r squared, r dr d theta. And r is just going to go from 0 to 1 all the way around. Theta is going to go all the way around to 2 pi. And that just means I've got what then? I've got root 14 of d theta from 0 to 1 of r cubed dr. So that's root 14. That goes back up to theta from 0 to 2 pi. And that'll be a quarter of r to the 4 from 0 to 1. So root 14 times 2 pi times a quarter. Put all together, root 14 pi up in 2. That was an easy one. So, part three, use Gauss's divergence theorem to evaluate the surface integral, which is actually uh, the scalar product of some vector field and the normal to the surface, which in this case is the surface of a sphere. Again, a very simple sphere, centre of the origin, radius one. Right, so Gauss's divergence theorem, which says that if you've got the summation of the scalar product of a vector field and the normal to the surface over some closed surface, a closed surface looking like this, with all the, the normal vectors coming out, of course, at right angles to the surface, then the summation of all of that is equal to the summation of, the, of a scalar field throughout the volume enclosed by that surface, that closed surface. Now, that N stands for the unit normal vector, though. So for the unit normal vector, if you have some surface described by some function of x, y, and z equal to zero, then the normal is given by the partial of f by x, the partial of f by y, and the partial of f by z. However, you know, for to get the unit normal, I'll need to get the length of it and then divide by that. Right, so clearing that, what do we have in this particular case? Well, the surface in this case is the surface of a sphere. The surface of the sphere, x squared plus y squared plus z squared equals 1. And so then that means that for putting that into the form of that equals 0, to get the normal vector, then I differentiate that in terms of 2x, 2y, and 2z. Getting the length of that, well, first of all, I could just take x, y, z, because any vector parallel to that would do. And the length of that is going to be x squared plus y squared plus z squared, which is just 1 by the formula. So that means the length is just 1, so the normal is just x, y, z. So in the actual question here, for the surface, well, we've got these three terms which would have come from that scalar product of f dot the unit vector. Which means that that expression would be these three components. So that means it's the x component times x, the y component times y, and the z component times z that produced these three terms. Well, that must mean that the original vector field must have been, taking the x away from that would have been x squared, Dividing out a y from that would be xy, and dividing out a z from that would be z cubed. So that must have been the original vector field. And I want div of f. So that means differentiating each of the components with respect to x, y, and z in turn. So the x, y, and z components. So that's going to give me 2x plus x plus 3z squared. So that's 3x 
plus three z squared. We have better go up here. So what have I got? I've got a triple integral over the surface of that sphere of 3x plus the 3z squared, sorry, dv, over this sphere. <coughs> x squared plus y squared plus z squared equals 1. Right, so that looks like it's going to be a case for spherical coordinates then. Clear this wee space here. Now, well, first of all, splitting this bit up, we've got 3x, so that 3 can come out. And the reason for taking that x away is that's annoyed power. Now, if that's annoyed power, then going through the volumes, since it's the same in both halves, that would cancel out. Z squared's positive, though, so that'll, that'll be okay. So spherical coordinates, I know I don't need these first ones, I'll put them down anyway, so the usual ones, rho, sine, phi, sine, theta, I need this one, rho, cos, theta, the volume element, rho squared, sine, theta, d rho, d phi, d theta. So I've got three times, now, going through this sphere, the radius goes from 0 to 1, or rather the ray goes from 0 to 1, rho goes from 0 to 1, Phi goes from the top to the bottom to sweep out a semicircle, so it's zero to pi, and then theta in the xy plane goes all the way around to open it all out into a complete ball. Of z squared, so that's rho cos phi squared, rho squared sine theta, d rho divided d theta. So I've got from that, I've just did d theta, I've got cos squared, and then sine for the phi, and that's going to be rho to the power 4 d rho. Put that back up to the top just to clear the space. So three times, well that will just be theta going from 0 to 2 pi. This one here could be a beta function. We'll just check what happens. Sine's fine and cos squared's fine, so that means that both halves are the same, so it's two lots of the beta function. So two times one of that, and that stays as one, add up to three down to one, well they're not the same, no pi upon two, and that goes up to five divided by five. So that'll be three times two pi times two upon three times a fifth, so that'll be four pi on top, and five underneath, and that's it.